and this time coming to you with another strategy video. Uh, this time we will be covering Ephesus and Ephesus is uh, one of my favorite wonders. I really like playing it and this is one of my favorite strategy. It works very well on all level of competitions. So I think this is something you will appreciate. Uh, as you can see in the title, this is not uh, a unique strategy because I think this is very popular, but a unique twist I, I, I want to talk about and I want to talk about some, you know, um, ba basically this archetype because I think this cheap sauce Ephesus uh, is really good and this is something you should really play and you should consider and this is this is a staple that you can do other stuff but this is something that's often a default for many people. So this is a replay of my tournament game. This is a tournament uh, that you had to qualify for. This is five player tournaments. Um, Lila Love has been running them a lot. So this is the finals of the tournament. So you can see something here. Uh, here we are choosing B uh, with cheap sauce Ephesus. Uh, you generally want to go B uh, as you have uh, much better access to money early. And that's very important. So first hand, uh, nothing great. Um, we have to think about this game strategically. Of course, uh, coming into this game uh, when I'm near Babylon and Giza, I'm already thinking about cheap sauce Ephesus. Uh, I think I should stop saying that probably uh, somewhere soon. Um, and what is the Ephesus strategy that I just mentioned? Uh, so basically it uh, requires you um, the main premise is very simple. You have access to a lot of money. Uh, and if you have access to a lot of money, uh, you just tr uh, find a way to spend it best. So the best way to spend it is to use a um, trading post, one of the other. Uh, and when you are near two people, um, Giza and Babylon, who are very likely to build a lot of resources, uh, that just seems like uh, a no-brainer. Then Again, you know, a lot of stuff can happen. Babylon can go into heavy green, for example. Giza can go full yellow and not build stuff. Um, there are a lot of things that can go wrong still with this one, but uh, this was just my main thing coming into it. The next thing that you have to see here is that uh, we are in a green corner. So we are at the tip of the green corner and at the wrong tip. So Alexandra is um, at the at best position to, to play for green probably. The next, if Alexandria doesn't play for green, and it's very likely that he won't. And then we have Babylon, and then we have me. But if I can force it, maybe I can play in green. So I decided to try and force it with the loom pickup. Uh, maybe I can even get three green cards if the workshop wheels back to me. And also loom is very important for my third stage. Um, whoa, what is that? And uh, my first stage, um, you know, it's pretty important to me. And there is, of course, only one gray per uh, first era. Um, okay, so here we have to go apothecary. This is this is a no-brainer. Then I was hoping still for a miracle uh, in green. Uh, for all three, but also uh, it's very likely that they will bury for me. So I thought that Scriptorium here is best, but I wouldn't blame Altar Pickup here. But I think Scriptorium is better here. It's much safer. And here is the pickup that we really wanted. So Trading Post. As you can see, uh, Babylon aligns perfectly with our resources that we need for our first and second stage. So we just pick his trading post and are very happy with it. So this will, like your Chipsos Ephesus, I'm going to say that, sorry guys. <laughs> and this will look a lot like this. So you will have um, a loom, or if you like are next to someone who built loom, you will have um, a glass, you will have some green. Um, you can you can do a lot of stuff with, with this strategy. You can do... do uh, green plus blue, like with a heavier emphasis on blue or on green. Here you can see a, a green version, for example. And this is a moment of decision here. Um, and I thought that given how uh, well in red prepared um, are my um, neighbors, 
and given that I still have money for a, a Wonder Stage or a green card if it wills, uh, I can play Stokade here and I can just try to play a little bit on red. And this is where the twist comes because normally you don't want to do that. And I cannot stress this, that enough. You don't want to play red with this strategy because red requires a lot of brown resources and you do not have them normally with this strategy. But here he steals uh, the blue, so I'm kind of forced to build a stage. And here is the decision moment. Um, I have three money, so as you can see, it's uh, one too little to play both um, the Wonder Stage and the Red on this hand. And there is a high probability that they will play a lot of Reds. Uh, just because um, Babylon, for example, doesn't have a strategy yet. So that means that probably, uh, given that he is not the best at the Grey at the moment, but he's not the worst, he will either pick Red or Green. So if he picks uh, Red, which sounds... Um, probably the, the wisest, given his position, uh, then we will have problems winning red. So here I decided to just, you know, play it safe and uh, play Sawmill here. Um, and by play, I mean, of course, hide. Uh, but there are a couple other lines that you can take. Generally, if you are not playing red, I would say you shouldn't hide red, because the more red in the pool, uh, the more likely they are to steal points from each other. Um, one thing that could be good here um, would be to hide press, but we are hiding press from Alexandria and Olympia, who don't really need that. So I thought here I will just hide Sawmill uh, because it looks like, for example, uh, Iguana on Alexandria could use that. But I think maybe there is also a line with like playing foundry for example to have good access to some reds but mm, i generally think this hands kind of stinks for us and as you can see uh, babylon just play red uh, we get the worst hand that we can hope for <laughs> Uh, basically, we want uh, both tablets to be on separate hands, and then they are on one hand that we only pick once. So here I decided that the library is more important, just because it's cheaper and it lets uh, us to um, also senate that we'd like to steal away. He plays another red, so that's of course also troubling. Um... This is a tricky hand, uh, because uh, here I made, made a mistake, I think. Is because as you can see, uh, we do not have access to double clay and we cannot build the laboratory. So I think uh, like the correct pick from this hand would actually to be uh, to play Brickyard. But that is a hard choice to make. When you get hands like this, it's usually very hard and it can still not pay off because the dispensary and both laboratories can be on one hand. But I think that Brickyard or maybe even the Vineyard would be the best pick on this hand uh, because we know like we know what what is coming to us basically and we know that it's nothing good um, and we would like this Brickyard to be honest. Here exactly what happens. <laughs> Three cards we cannot play. Um, you can play um, Wonder Stage from this hand, but I decided to pick Bazaar just because it's a little better than throwing. We finally get the access, so that's nice. This hand is actually nice because we get the courthouse. And last hand, I decided to play the Foundry 
because I thought I will not have enough picks if I do not play the Foundry. I think you can go either way. You can play the Foundry, you can throw, or you can build Wonder Stage. Probably Wonder Stage is a little better than throwing here. Um, so yeah, this is basically kind of wasted pick here. Coming into H3, as you can see with the cheap sauce FSOs, I, I can't help myself, I will say that. Um, you have a lot of points. Like, you build your wonder stages that grant you points. Um, you generally don't spend that much yet. Like, the, the third era is the time to spend. Uh, you have some green, you have some blue, so those naturally give some points. Uh, here, mm, I fought for a long time, and I fought traders makes the best use of my money and uh, precious time in the third era because my neighbors are very likely to play uh, yellow cards university would be nice if not uh, for that we miss school right now and generally in this game we are kind of in a tough position because he like he stole our cogs that's the worst thing that can happen uh, to us but hopefully we will get one or two so next hand, this is actually much better. We can play decorators from this hand and be very happy about it. This time, um, this was like, as soon I made the play here and I was regretting it, but then I was like, no, maybe it's good. So <clears throat> this is the hand for you to analyze in this game. Uh, I will try to, in my new videos, make like once, um, once per video, I will make a choice for you and think what you would have played here and really think about it, like pause it for a second and really, really think about it. And I'm going to reveal now. I played Arsenal because I was tracking reds and I thought that I can win both reds and it's, um, it's not best for Babylon to play red at the moment because it doesn't give him anything and he is still fighting for something in this game. And he played a red guild, which suggests that he's okay with others playing red. So I decided to play Arsenal, but I thought that, wow, that's a huge mistake, probably. The safe pick here uh, is the Lodge, of course. And that's that's the very safe pick. I wouldn't go for magistrates. It's just too costly. So here we we got bailed out, but at the same time we don't, <laughs> because I can hide Arsenal, and I can be very happy with winning red, like. If uh, I was tracking red and I think that if the red comes, uh, there is another red for for me. I don't remember right now, but I remember when I was playing this hand because this was actually played uh, not like over the board real time. This was actually um, turn based correspondence. So I, I was actually in my notes. I was uh, I was like um, noting where each card was because that's the only way you can play turn based. Uh, so here. I was prepared to hide Arsenal when this hand, hand came back to me, but of course I couldn't anticipate Scientist Guild on this hand. So now we go into like, you know, counting basically. So I can hide Arsenal, but at the same time, you know, I'm missing out on the Great Scientist Guild. But as you can see, there is a Ship Owners Guild. So what I like to do in these situations is I like to think what would I have done as a Babylon player. So let's say I play Scientist Guild and uh, it comes to him as Arsenal, Chamber and Ship Owners. What would he play? And I think, like given that he is a strong player, I think he plays Ship Owners 100% of the time. So I decided to go for Scientist. As you can see, I, I went back and forth. <laughs> Given that he played also the, um, the blue guild, it's even more likely. So here, uh, choice between uh, Senate University. No, I'm just kidding. It's study. Of course, it's study. Uh, it's a 10-pointer, so that's just great. And the last hand, um, 
as you can see, maybe I could have gone away with not playing Foundry, but not really, because uh, it helped me pay for scientists, it helped me pay for uh, decorators, and it helps me pay for a wonder stage. I have to play a wonder stage here, um, because, you know, uh, I have the decorators guild. So here, just um, wonder stage, doesn't matter what, because there is no Halicarnassus in this game. And because I was able, like, when I played this, I was just hoping for one red win, uh, which maybe wasn't the best, but I got two red wins. I was, like, maybe, like, 10% hoping for double red win. I win this uh, very um, convincingly, so, so that's nice. Um, what you can take away from this game is how strong, like, trading is. For Ephesus is like I know this is not something groundbreaking, and you like if you played Seven Wonders, it's like of course trading post is great for Ephesus. Uh, but also not playing brown cards, um, like especially when you have East trading, because East trading leads to like the guy after you in the first round, he will get a lot of those brown cards. Like, he played three out of six cards that he got in the first age, he played three brown cards. We we played none, right? So um, this is something to, to keep in mind. Like, Seven Wonders have, has a fixed pool. So um, whatever you, you don't take, others people will, because eventually they will be forced to take it. So... Um, this strategy, of course, has a lot of branching. This is just basically a base that you can build upon. Uh, I would say that what um, like what makes this strategy this strategy is inclusion of a trading post and trying to uh, get points on blues and greens <coughs> at the same time. Uh, this was maybe a little less blue than normal, but usually you'll you'll have a lot of more blues and also not playing a lot of resources. As you can see, I only played two. So, <clears throat> in the end, I've played like four cards for resources, so that would be Foundry, Loom, East Trading, and Bazaar, because, you know, it gives me po uh, gold that I can spend on resources. And I still was able to, to play cards and, and you know, uh, win this game. So let me know what you guys think. Also, short, short update, I am currently uh, have like minor health issues, so uh, the, the schedule update is not going to be uh, as frequent as it was before. I will still try to produce uh, one video a week for you, uh, but if I don't, please don't be mad, don't leave. <laughs> I will be back, I just have to, you know, um, get back to, to form, basically. Uh, hopefully you have a nice day, and see you guys next time. Bye!